Hello everyone, it's the Ramen Noodle Goddess and I am going to be making this video about a book that came out a little bit more than a week ago and that is A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Mass. So this book took me about two days to finish only because I had a really busy schedule at the time and I think I got it actually a day after it was released because I was so busy I completely forgot about the book coming out on May 1st so I got it May 2nd and if I didn't have like school and homework and everything that I had to deal with that week I probably could have finished this in one sitting in like four or five hours but uh, it took me two days with everything going on. This video isn't really gonna be a review because I don't do that many book reviews and I feel like I'm not very good at book reviews or anything like that so it's mostly just kind of gonna kind of be like a rant about this book because it's only 200 pages like it's a little over 200 pages long and it was uh, there were a lot of different opinions about it I watch a lot of book reviews and everything and a lot of people liked it and some people were like what was the point like this book wasn't all that great and the writing style is weird but in my opinion I liked it very much just because this series, A Court of uh, Thorns and Roses series, is my m most favorite series of all time. Like, even over the Throne of Glass series, which I think I read or started reading before A Court of Thorns and Roses. But yeah, this series is definitely um, my top five. Definitely first place. <laughs> um, and honestly, I loved this book and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading it so much and I could see why people would think like you know there was really no true point to it but I thought there was like a good reason for this book being written because it's kind of like what happened after the whole war happened and how all the characters are doing and how they're coping with it and I just thought it was really interesting to know about that because I feel like if the actual series ended and then the book after this came out about everything after I would feel like well now we don't know what's happened in between what happened I want to know so I think it's kind of cool that this book came out just showing I think it was only like three months after the war or something or six months or I don't know it was a few months after the war but I just really enjoyed knowing all the info I guess and how they're all doing at that moment after the war has ended and how they're trying to rebuild everything and trying to get back to normal almost but overall I enjoyed this book just because I think I was in the mindset where I knew I would enjoy it and because I always enjoy Sarah J Mass's books um but yeah that was kind of just my I don't know I guess opinion I was trying to find another word for it but that's just my opinion on how I liked this book and how this book was for me but I'm going to be moving on to like specifics and spoilers now so if you haven't read it oh my god go read it I really liked it it's amazing if you liked um A Court of Thorns and Roses series you're gonna like this book most likely but yeah if you haven't read it go read it and then come back okay so first off I would just like to start out saying that my favorite line in all of this in like all of its entirety is when I forget the exact moment and the exact scene or the page or whatever but it was the line where Cassian calls Amran a giant snowball because she walked into the townhouse I think and it was cold it's like winter and she walked in and she was wearing this gigantic white coat and Pharaoh was like oh my god she looks like a and then Cassian cuts in and is like you look like a giant snowball and I don't know why that made me laugh so much but I literally laughed out loud I was reading my book on my bed and I laughed out loud like a crazy person I don't know how many books have made me laugh out loud but I can tell you that not a lot have and that is why I like her books because these books make me laugh and cry and everything all at once so I don't know that scene and that line just stuck out to me and when I finished the book I was trying to recall everything that I thought would be like that I could count as like oh this is my favorite part or whatever and that line and that scene just kept coming up in my brain like oh my god Cassian called Amran a giant snowball 
Uh, speaking of snow, can I just talk about how um, Cassian and Az drag Reese off? I think it was like the day before solstice, the winter solstice, solstice, and Faye was like, well, what's this freaking tradition that they're about to be doing? And then I think it was more, it was more that took them up uh, to where all the Valyrian babies were, and they were having a snowball fight with forts and snowballs. Okay. Illyrian babies, I think so. I just thought that was so freaking funny, and, um, okay, can I just say that I don't normally write notes for books that I read, but, like, this one's special. And can we also talk about how Tamlin's basically dead inside? Like, the first time Reese went to visit him, he was, like, like, he was basically emo. All his crap was messed up, his whole house was pretty much broken, all the servants were gone, everybody was gone, and then Tamlin was just sitting there, just like, dead inside. And it was, it was kind of sad, but I still kind of hate him, so like, I don't want to like, feel pity or anything, and I don't really feel pity, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I kind of don't feel bad for him, but at the same time, it's like, if it was anyone else, get some help, please. I feel bad, but I don't. Not really, you know? You know? Also, sorry if you hear, like, music downstairs. My dad's playing the bass. Just saying. And I also kind of didn't want to say this in the video, but I also kind of feel like I have to if I'm going to be talking about all the good parts and all the parts that I really enjoyed. Um, but to me, okay, the book as a whole, it was, like, really entertaining. And like, I never wanted to put the book down, but if I had to pick the most boring parts of the book, it would probably be the chapters where they would go to the Illyrian camp. So I think it showed up in Cassian's chapters and I think Reese's chapters. And I love Cassian and I love Reese, but, um, well, I love Cassian, but Reese kind of, I feel like Reese's personality in the writing that Sarah J Maas gave him, if that makes sense, made it a little bit more interesting to me just because of the way he talked about everything and observed everything. And then, I don't know, it wasn't like it was totally like drop dead boring, like I just wanted to put this book down because I can't read this crap anymore. It was probably just the most boring part, but I still enjoyed reading it, you know what I'm saying? I also want to talk a little bit about Nesta because oh my god is she messed up. Like. I know you just went through a lot, but like literally everybody just kind of went through a lot and everybody's trying to be nice to you, but then she goes around and is like, no, I don't want your charity. And then she goes off to live in some slum and I'm like, you literally are part of the richest family in Valeris right now and you're living in a slum, getting drunk like every night and taking home men like it's nothing. And it was really, really annoying to read, like not annoying where, you know, it was just frustrating because I wanted Nesta to be happy, I guess. Not like she was Elaine happy before, but she was just kind of like Tamlin. She's kind of dead inside right now. And another thing that I thought was like cute was when she came to the solstice after all and then Elaine was the only person that got her a solstice gift, which was like a collection of books. And then she walked out and like it didn't look back and I was like what like that's your family in there I know you're sad and you probably have like PTSD which I, we find out at the end of the book but like they're your family and they went through the same thing pretty much as you except excerpt at the back of the book kind of shows what happened in the cauldron which I thought was really cool like but still Nesta get it together can I also just say, why did Cassian have to throw his solstice gift to Nesta into the river? It was a tiny little wooden box or whatever, and he just threw it in the river after she walked away. And I was like, well, now I want to know what's inside. I literally wrote in my notes, Nesta, be with your family, OMG. I hate myself. Oh, and I also, for like solstice presents, I so called that Feyre was going to give, like his, her present to Resand was like, wanting to have a baby and like giving him a chance I guess to have a baby and I was like she went up to the cabin and was like oh my god the freaking cabin everything happens at the cabin and like this book is this book series is so steamy all the time like I kind of expected steamy to happen 
like in every chapter of the book and it didn't but it did a lot and when they went up to the cabin and she was like you still have one more solstice gift and I was like oh they're gonna have sex now and they're probably gonna want a baby and I was right. I also kind of feel bad for Lucian just because Elaine's his mate but Elaine doesn't want him and I'm not really even sure if Lucian wants her because it would probably just feel like a whole forced mating bond just kind of how like Reese or was it Reese's parents? No. Oh my god I can't remember. I hate myself. I think it was Reese's parents. Cassian's parents? No. It was one of the parents. I think it was Reese's parents. But um, I just, I feel like if they were to get together, it would just be a forced mating bond and I don't want that. And I also kind of ship her and Asriel just because, I don't know, they're really nice. And her solstice gift to him, like I'm all over the place, but her solstice gift to him was the little um, bottle of like headache powder or something and you can like mix it into a drink because she always notices that he's rubbing his temples when he's around everybody and he's getting like frustrated or annoyed and they give him headaches and I'm like oh Elaine like is noticing him and is watching him or whatever and I don't know some people want them to be get be together and some people don't just because like they think that they'd make really good friends uh, but like I don't I ship them all the way like hashtag Aslan like I don't know if that's the ship name, but that's what I'm calling them for now. I also literally wrote, I hate Tamlin, hashtag no pity. Oh, I also thought it was funny that when Feyre and Cassian were like drunk and decorating the townhouse with like the pine needles or whatever, and then Azriel walks in and is like, what, what the heck happened? Like, why are you two decorating whoever told you two of all people to decorate this house and then has to start fixing it? It's like he's the mom of the family and I was like, it was really cute to read, it was funny. Also, I would just like to mention that Reese's chapters are so hormonal and sexual that I, I just, I can't. So I have two things left to say about this book for this video, which is actually surprising because I thought it would go on way longer, but the first thing, one of the last things I want to say is that the inner circle, just like Feyre and her family all hanging out, just kind of reminded me of the TV show Friends a little bit, where like they kind of go through everything together, like good or bad, and then they're just always, they always end up together just hanging out and talking, and I don't know, that just, little reminder of Friends. I, I love that show, by the way. And the last thing I want to say is, I was watching this other booktuber make a book review on this, and she was talking about how the word mate was a little bit redundant and like it was pretty much used in every line and I t I went back and I looked through um, the chapters where I remembered mate being used a lot and I was like yeah I can kind of see your point and the words are used a lot in that chapter and a little bit too much all in a row personally I, I uh, in my opinion I think that uh, also but on the other hand you also kind of have to remember that what these books are built off of like what their fanatical history holds behind them is that mates are literally everything it's like i need a mate or i'm gonna die kind of like maybe not that dramatic but you know what i mean right and i get that the words are a little bit redundant but you also kind of have to get in that mindset mindset sometimes like oh, this is, like, really important to this world and it's really important to them, so they're, like, really proud to use it and they want to they wanna talk about their mate all the time or whatever, and, like, I don't know. Kind of devil's ad advocate there, like, I just thought I could agree with you, but on the other hand, you know, blah, 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 and whatever. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say for A Court of Frost and Starlight. Again, I love this series, my most favorite series in the world. I will never stop loving these books. And I am really happy that this book came out because I just need more little snippets of their lives because I miss them so much. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment down below for any other book you'd like me to review because with this whole 2018 reading challenge that I've got going on that I posted back in February, I've been all over the place with books and I'm not really like updating you guys about certain books I'm reading just because, you know, the books I'm reading for the challenge I'm going to update you guys all at the end of the year so I can't talk about that throughout the year otherwise it'll kind of ruin that end of the year video. But um, if you guys want me to read or review anything else just let me know down below and I will try to make it happen. But again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.